Hello everyone, Eduardo here. Hello. Allison? Yep. Howdy, thanks for coming. Thanks for having this. Anybody else? Okay, let's get started. <coughs> it's been my understanding that uh, here in the module, we have everything working as expected, probably a few things here and there that we should address. But the idea today is to get your suggestions and go for something that is streamlined, easy, fast, and informative that we can retrieve information valuable information this will i would call round number one and round number two i will try to connect the dots with possible ICSI centers that would be interested in you know having the project extended to their uh, ability to update records for you guys um all right, having that said, anybody would like to start with some comments based on your experience and uh, what you have lived or, or seen in, in this project? Um, okay, so Allison here, and I just wanted to tell everybody we used, we entered every single ICSI round into um, the art module in 2019 and um, went all the way from contracts and mare prep and all of that. And then ended up transferring embryos in the ET log and we've now fold out um, an ICSI full, so it works. Um, it just isn't very concise or user-friendly and all the data and the meat is there, it just isn't um, where we can get stuff back out. And so I think that it's just fine tuning a little bit, which I have um, requests and things that we wanna see out of it. So whenever you're to that point, I'll tell you my wishes, but um, if anybody else has used it, yeah. let us know. Let's get going, Allison. If, if anybody feel you know, uh, compelled to join or sometimes people get a little bit shy, so okay. let's just break the ice. It's just a few people in this meeting. There's nothing formal yeah. here. Let's just try to extract as much as we can uh, out of this meeting. So tell me a little bit. I'm curious. Have you found, Allison, any any particular glitch or malfunction initially speaking about the problems that need to be fixed? Um, I don't think any more. The only one was that we couldn't fall out an ICSI horse, and I think you fixed that um, at least with the one today or, or a couple of days ago. So we can do that now. To my knowledge, we don't have any glitch. Okay. Uh, you used to have Christina there, if I remember well, doing the XC entries for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, who is responsible for that at your um, today? Kelly, Sam, and myself are all doing the data entry part of it. Um, and right now, that really is all that it is, is just entering data so that we can get it back out. Okay. But uh, while that is, is fine, and, and we're not using the whole middle section, we do the aspiration, set the merit for that, and then wait and get embryos. So all that middle part is very cumbersome to us because we're having to affect every oocyte and even through um, setting it up in culture. And I don't need to mess with that. But the bigger problem for me is that when I have a donor mare and we want to go back and talk about her history or um, have conference with the, the owner and how things are going and how we've done, there's nowhere to get that back out. So if I pull up you know, Dolly, then uh, we don't know what happened with her unless somehow someone somewhere made really good notes or we refer to the Excel sheet we've been keeping, which I think Wise Option ought to be able to do that pretty simply. I think that would be more related to the part that I was mentioning about trying to get informative output from the program. Yes, yeah. right. I see, why, I see your point. Um, well, initially the design was totally having in mind actually they step-by-step step and, you know, 
it's yes. one of those things of perfect world versus real world. Right. So the perfect world would be for the person to, you know, go there and enter the contracts, do the mayor preparations. As soon as the mayor is ready, do the aspirations. As soon as you do the aspirations, you go for your ovaries. If you receive for shippings, so it could be either aspiration or ovaries, or if people are just shipping directly the all sites that they retrieved. At the end of the day, the idea was to have an inventory of all sites, a constant inventory maintenance, so the program could keep track of you know the all sites that are present. Um, and maintain and see the status of the current old sites in the inventory, as well as, of course, the history of old sites in that inventory. But here would be what I call one of the logs. Um, what, also, if you are, you know, doing the aspirations and keeping your inventory, you could ship it out. And uh, this would be probably the transfer, the old site transfers when you are putting the old sites. It seems to be a technique, not so much in in practice today but back then when the system was developed it would be to implant the old sites into recipient mares and then fertilize the recipient mares that's why we have here the recipient mare insemination log exactly thinking about the old sites that were transferred into recipient and of course based on the old site inventory we can perform the ICSIs. Having the ICSIs, um, we would then put those ICSIs in the incubator. Here at the ICSI would be another moment that we, we internally here call by inventory moment. So, so far we have two. We have the old site moment for inventory control, and we have the ICSI inventory moment for controlling as well. And these, uh, I mean, once perform the ICSI, those ICSIs would be in the incubator. Incubator here would be just the machines themselves. So the process again was the perfect world trying to find a tune, a presence in the moment that we would have different types of incubators and then even keep track of the combination of gas, oxygen, CO, temperature, and all those logs. Um, for you know, hope, thinking about future academic papers or something like that, because we could, from this system, track any kind of uh, reports and, and statistical analysis. But from the inventory points, probably we would have the old sites and the ICSIs. Once the ICSIs are completed, and we're going to do from the inventory the evaluations, how many you know cleavage and how many after actually become embryos, and from then we can have our inventory of embryos, which of course we could either either put into our vitrified embryos inventory or uh, directly transfer into recipient mare or ship them to a different location. This is just a shortcut that takes us to the embryo transfer log. And of course, up here, we have the, fro the vitrified embryos inventory that can come from these other portions of the system as well as the art. I was just thinking about giving you this quick review about how we designed things and now having that set, I think that stops here. And we're going to go more towards what we can do to expedite the process, number one. Number two, how to create um, intelligible uh, information screens that we can retrieve data. And, and then we can you know, go from there for on the third moment, do the integration. Now, my understanding, and this is for you, Allison, is that, you know, you pretty much speed up the process about entering your contracts, if needed, entering the aspirations, go directly to all sites, and performing the XC right on the spots. In other words, I think you just sit on the computer to do the data entry at the moment you already have your first results from the XC. Am I correct? No. So... Um, we go step by step. So after mares aspirated, we're entering in um, how many how many oocytes were recovered, 
and then um, once it gets to injection is when we actually um, touch the oocytes and either say that they're good or not. Um, and then after injection, uh, we have to make them cleave and then, and that's happening when we get information. And then after cleavage, whether they have an embryo that they're going to transfer or freeze, we enter that at that, at that time. So we're trying to do everything um, at least within, you know, 24 hours. Sometimes we're getting texts and stuff um, in the evening. So we'll do that the next morning, but we are doing it step by step. So it seems that you're pretty much keeping this up to date on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. What would be then, Allison, since seems to be you the more active one in the process? Mm -hmm. um, the first moment, let's think about quick data entries first. What mm -hmm. would be the very first place in the menu you would like to have a quick data entry? Um, well, I'd like for it to start with um, some basic information like the mayor, the, um, the potential stallions, and then an appointment time for aspiration. I mean, we have to start it somehow. So the key factor here would be for, for aspiration quick data entry, to have well, stallion, mayor, and potentially an appointment for aspiration. Yeah, it wouldn't, it would, I would like to begin with information that's different than just the number of oocytes aspirated. It would need to go one step before that, which is kind of where your contract, your mayor prep and all that stuff go. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe one step before aspiration so that, um, you know, in thinking about communication down the road, um, we happen to use Equimbrio, um, and so um, we had a mare that we just did um, today. And so on Monday, we would send them an email saying, we've scheduled this mare, this is the, the stallions they're gonna go to as an informational, be prepared kind of a thing. And if thinking about talking to ICSI facilities and all that, it would be nice to have kind of that information that went in an email um, be able to be transmitted from wise option to wise option to that ICSI facility. Does that make sense? No, you lost me in the very last part. So um, uh, up to the part where you perform the aspiration, I'm good. Is after the aspiration that you lost me? No, no, no. I'm just saying that before we aspirate, we're communicating with the ICSI facility saying, uh, hey, we're going to do up. this. You are about to aspirate. Yeah. So I, be I believe for us, a beginning part would be before aspiration, more in the setup portion of it, who the mayor is, who the stallions are going to be, you know, where we intend to send, more of an intention kind of thing, what the appointment is, uh, um, that kind of a thing, and then go into that appointment, um, or, you know, that maybe that's an ICSI round, which could be numbered, potentially, um, but anyway, go into that new ICSI round record and then start entering how many were were aspirated, how many were recovered. That would be the first quick data entry, I believe, but it has to start with something. Okay. So do you think that we can use, modify, adjust the current aspiration log or in your impression, we should start from scratch? Um, I think that I believe that all of the the stuff that exists will work. And what I believe is just like whenever you do the frozen semen quick data entry, it's kind of making adjustments and plugging holes for us. So let's just say that we said that seven oocytes were aspirated or recovered. And then we go in and say, well, of those seven, five were injected. So I believe on the back end, it should do the injection one by one for us and then move them forward into the oocyte log, you know, or move them forward into the ICSI log. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the logs are still valuable to see what's working. Well, let me repeat it back to you to see if I got it right. So from the aspiration log, we could not only start and, and kind of create some sort of uh, 
um, planning for what's about to come regarding aspirations, uh -huh. but also update those aspirations. Yeah. And by updating those aspirations, results, uh, wise option automatically would auto feed the next steps, which would be all sites in each Yes. Yes. And then like before you can do the ICSI, you have to set them in culture. Well, I think that if we tell it we did ICSI on seven of them, it would do all those steps in the middle that are so cumbersome and just get it to where we can do the injection or tell it how many were injected with what stallion. Repeat that for me, please. So, okay, so let's have the scenario that we had seven aspirated, we injected five. Well, from those two things, um, I want it to do the, the work. So you have to set them in culture, you have to do all the, I can't remember the steps, I haven't done any in a little bit, but if you set the oocytes in culture, if you set the, the embryos, I think you set the, the, the oocytes after injection in culture, and then you can mark cleavage. So like those little steps that you have to go through before you can even get to say whether or not you inject it or whether or not it cleaved, I'd like for wise option to do that for us. Let, but, me, try to, let me try to, uh, yes, now, now that you're said the second time, thank you. I, I, I kind of picture more or less what you're describing. I don't want to lose the logs because to see the number of embryos that are still potentially coming uh -huh. is very helpful. I just want it to do all the hard work for us. I see. The, the, how Allison, about, do you? Do you Lindsay at TSU, and I got a bunch of people in here. I had a real quick question on that. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily care if it's oocyte number one that cleaves and goes on. You just want like you're just looking for an end point. Is that yes? Correct? Yes, for us. And I believe yeah. that it was more set up for people that are actually doing injection and tracking oocyte number one, number two, number three, and and every day doing an update on them and how they're looking and all that. I again, I don't care. It's kind of like frozen semen. I don't know what the motility was and all of the stuff. I just want to know how many straws per dose, you know, that kind of thing. So I, for somebody that's the same thing with, if you do a quick data entry for an embryo transfer log, you know, or things yep. like that. I just want it to, to do all this, like breathe the air and make her ovulate and do all that stuff for me, just get to this end point. And so, yes, for me, I don't care which, because I don't have them in front of me. I don't care which one's which. I just know that of seven, five were injected. Of five, three cleaved. That's all I yeah. want to know. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about you, Lindsay? Do you? Yeah. Are y'all on the same page? Or, or for you is. I mean, from where, from where we're at, a we we just jumped on to six this fall, right? So we obviously haven't put anything in through here to know cumbersome, not cumbersome. I know a lot of what was done was off of what was here with the intent of being able to extract minuscule types of data. I think a lot of that could probably totally be changed. Really, Joanne sitting in the room and she says yes. So I think it could probably be a lot more streamlined, which would probably help people um, a lot. And us too, because honestly, like I'm listening to you talk about how many people you have data entering. I mean, for us, it would be ideal to do it at the time things are happening, just like we do embryos at the time things happen, not try to go back and, you know, redo that because we don't, you know, we're not going to have the staff um, you even to do that. To select a procedure for like the culture media. Well, and it's an actual procedure or additive or something like that. Again, I can't yeah. remember, but there are so many things that I know why they're there. I mean, I know before we got, I keep going to frozen semen. I know we had to put plug in numbers just because we didn't know them the same way that we had to make the horse born in 1170 for y'all that remember that if we didn't know their age. Of course. Yep. There's a lot of those things that we don't care about, but I still think that for actual ICSI labs, this stuff is really important. It's just not important to me. Yeah. So you just need a way that, that on when you on the quick, the quick part that it bypasses. Yeah. Those, do all the work. <laughs> all the details. She's like a AP log and she you can type everything in size and all that or yeah. you can just do quick data entry yeah and so maybe that's what needs to be is there's a quick data entry option for oocytes for oocyte reduction yeah. yeah 
Now, Lindsay, I know that you guys have plans to start using this sometime down the road at the Colorado State University. My question to you is, do you think you would start more like Allison is saying, or you would try to go more for the detailed process? Um, I, I think that really for our ease, probably something more like what Allison's talking about would probably be where we would start from. We, we are still, and nobody yell at me, we still keep paper records. We're really trying. So OSI number one, and whether it went on or not, is still tracked. Like I can go get that data. You know, um, if we're really going to try to do this and see if it makes it work. Yeah. I think the timing we couldn't do all those intricacies. Yeah, either. because right now the way the system does it even allows you on the old site aspirations to determine the groups versus mm -hmm. the large mature ones. You know, it differentiates if you are working with a big one or if it is a group and you can split them later on. So I, I'm, I'm having the feeling that you are more for the simplified way as well. Yeah. And I, I would like to interject. I think after y'all using it, you would have amazing input in how to make it better. Y'all, I don't know what a lot of these terms mean and we've been plugging holes. Like we just put the same number every time so that it'll let us click next. So that's kind of what I want Wise Option to do in the background. But I don't think, Eduardo, that you should change a lot of this because I know that it was set up with a lot of really intelligent people and this is what they do. And I think that this is still useful and all of that detail is useful for people that do, you know, maybe Lindsay is going to do that after a year of using the quick data stuff and maybe it does make sense. And uh -huh. maybe you talk to her and make it look more like her forms, you well, know? Yeah. Or I just another option. Kind of. Maybe maybe the way that I should approach this would be to leave those holes there and just like you're doing, Allison, let the program out of field with some random basic yeah. pop values yeah. for the quick data entry stuff, uh, but leave the original, you know, um, complex formats yeah. that are there, just creating simplifications of the, the workflow. I see tons of value in what you've already made. I'd hate for you to change it based on people that don't actually do injections and stuff that are just looking for a shortcut. Because I think that's all we're asking for is a shortcut. Yeah. And I, I do think, and I don't know, you maybe you would talk to some other places, but the stuff that you have about the OT, um, the, the, I mean, no, I don't know that anybody does that anymore at all. I think you could archive those options. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. So now, Allison, let me pick a little bit more on your brain because it seems that you've been the one who are who has <laughs> intensely used this this for real. Uh, my my question to you next would be, I was thinking here, um, and if you translate a little bit to what happens to the semen order in this mere summary card quick data entry. I was thinking that beside the quick data entry form here, we would create some sort of tree in the aspiration, or maybe I will come up with a new form probably, you know, mm -hmm. a quick data entry main slash maintenance uh, yeah. uh, form. That's gonna have more or less the same uh, look, but with pretty much all the options. And with a huge green, green plus here somewhere, when you click, you know, you can pick what the quick data entry you want to make. If it is just an aspiration, or if you want to go straight to the old sites, or if you want to go straight to the injections. That's not all bad because there's times that we get homeless embryos or they call and say, hey, we injected three, they're going to be checked tomorrow. And we go, well, you should have called us, but that's okay. And I don't have any other data. So yeah, I think that being able to start that process anywhere down the line is really helpful. <clears throat> well, and then I would create, just like we have in the semen order tree, if you remember that, that you have the stallion station, the name of the stallions, and it keeps breaking down, you know, when you click on the, the stallion station, it shows the semen orders per stallion, and when you click on the stallion, it breaks down the name yep. of the mares, so it's kind of a tree that goes yep. deeper and deeper. We could do this starting from the 
um, embryo owners, you know? Yeah. And, and when you click on the embryo owner, it shows, I don't know if you'd like the first node after that, the first sub node to be the mayor or the stallion, which one yeah. do you pick? Probably the mayor, in my opinion. But I think maybe you ought to give give us some options like you do on the senior yeah. order. I say stallion because it's, you can have multiple mares to the same stallion for the same owner. So mm. if, if you, you can have multiple mares to one stallion, but if you go to the mare. Well, you can also aspirate and inject with multiple stallions for that same true. round. That's true. Yes. Yes. I'm so, I okay. think that is my mindset that goes for the stallion first. You always have a better idea than I do. It seems like no matter what, but in my mind, when we have been talking about this a long time and me telling you my frustrations over the last year, I kind of thought in my mind there would be an entire different screen for, for, the, for the feedback part, okay? So an entire different sort of screen and, and I envision it kind of like each ICSI round. So maybe you could pull up each, each, each round that would start with scheduling aspiration, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, and then inside of that round, you might say, well, this mayor with stallion X produced, you know, or so many were recovered and we injected so many with stallion X and this many cleaved and this many, um, all the things. And that you would have a snapshot of that particular round with that mayor. Can anybody else add to that? Do y'all see where I'm going? Yes. Like you want to have some, a report or something that you're pulling after. I mean, because the, the clients, we are, you know, it's not a great technique yet, right? It, the rates are kind of bad and you expect, you know, less and less to, to, you know, you get seven, you have five injected and three cleave and you get it send an embryo and it works or it doesn't. But you would like to have to be able to, at the end of that, go, well, this is how the whole thing went and to have kind of a synopsis of how that did. I mean, Maybe it was um, that you didn't hardly start with any. Maybe you started with a bunch and only got one embryo. You know, you'd like to see a synopsis of how that went, how that whole round went from start to finish and maybe compare it from, you know, if we did three on this particular mare with different stallions, how, how did that work on each stallion or things like that. But I think having some sort of, of report for each round that was completed would be really helpful in our case. Um, and even to be sorted by stallion so that we know, you know, this stallion's doing great or we've had trouble with this one or whatever. Do you, does this tie in, do you see injections on the breeding log at all? Not currently. Like, tie in that way, like, you know, because maybe this mare was, uh, she's an ET donor first, you know, and you pull that embryo and you have that log and that record and an embryo was flushed, transferred, and then her next thing, she's going to an ICSI only stallion. Would that show up in some form on that way too or not? I think it should, but it doesn't. Currently, oh, yeah. I haven't found a way to get any information from what we've put in last year back out. Okay. I, I know that when we put it in, I have faith that we will get it back out. That's why we did it all, so we'll have killer reports when we're done. But as <laughs> of right now, it doesn't, it doesn't mimic anywhere. Um, we have taken it to where when there's a procedure that we, um, that we add for scheduling TVA, um, that's green so that at least when the vets look at it they can see you know this is where that started and then we're just adding miscellaneous notes we've set up a trigger for the days that we should be calling on everything and so it's going in procedures right now yeah and hopefully yeah. we put it all in but the you know. information is there uh regardless yeah, it's, it's there. the past the work that you have done in the past as soon as you create this synopsis screen yeah. all the pictures are going to come together so the records that you put in, uh, you know, you haven't lost your time there. Absolutely right. not. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I can see that, I mean, just on a 
side note, but same note is, you know, com a complete synopsis for a mare owner having that all on the breeding log, you know, in some way too, um, would be good. Cause or if, if this was an ICSI log and you could maybe choose to see, you know, or, or add it to a breeding log and have a big asterisk that this was ICSI and not an actual, you know, insemination kind of a thing. But I really like, Eduardo, how you're thinking about, um, you know, the trainers at the top, which I would think would be the mare owner. And then instead of stallion, I think it would be nice to have the mayor. And then each one of these records was maybe be all the ones that we did for her for that date range. And, yeah. and, and exactly. When I was trying to build this here on the fly, it was just to use this as an analogy, what I have in mind. Mm -hmm. So suppose this would be the, the owner of the contract, the name of the mayor, and all the dates, of course, up here somewhere, I would give you a scope of dates to be considered in the synopsis. So you would have kind of a, the, the, every one of the rounds initiated and the pluses like this to expand and collapse would keep going. So for each one, you would have another plus here that would give you the number of all sites. So it would show you if it is, five or 10, you, when you click on the plus, let's pretend that this exclamation point here would be the plus. If I click, it would expand in five all sites and I would have the status of each one of the all sites. And just like using the same analogy here, from the screen, you could use the right click with, but with a menu that would give you options on how to update those all sites and I will do the work on the backstage for you. That's where I'm going more or less with, with my approach in my ideas here. What do you think? I really like it a lot. Will you click on view two for me for a second though? Where? Because on view two, because I use the filters and I may want to see how we're doing for the year for a certain stallion. And if, if you're forcing us to do the tree, then the filters won't work. Right. I can have those two views as well there. Uh, it's just that we, we need to have a definition of what we're going to show in the roles. Is, are the roles going to be based on all sites? Are the roles going to be based on injections? Are the roles going to consider only embryos? And yeah. as soon as you click view number two, I can, I can give you sub options for view two mm -hmm. that you would pick one of them and then the roles would be built according to your option B. I don't want to make it any more work for you. If you if you think we ought to start with the tree view, and then once we're happy with the data that's there, figure out how to how to make it where it's each row. That, that, um, that expedites a lot. If we start with the tree and then compile to some compiling, because from the tree, uh, I have only one view to work on all the details, such yeah. as the right clicks and yeah. all the options that we should have here. Because the options that this menu is going to show, of course, depends on the current status of the old site, for example. Let's pretend that this is an old site. So if it is just an old site that was aspirated, the options here could be, you know, injection, or you could go straight to the embryo settings. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. And even looking at the, the top options here, I mean, I'm complaining because I want to look at uh, the stallions over the year. Well, stallion is an option. So maybe you leave things like that where we can pull out everything for a specific owner in tree view or everything for a specific stallion or mare in tree view. But uh -huh. I do think that the, and hover over the, um, the status marker real fast. The same way that that's there, um, it'd be nice to have have it may i don't know i'd like to be able to have that same kind of thing to date the thing the 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 mayor the stallion how many you know currently how many were aspirated how many were injected how many cleaved you know and if it's if we're just a cleavage maybe the the inject i mean maybe the embryo thing says pending oh, that's or totally possible like i was back here on view number one mm -hmm. back to my first analogy so let's assume that each one of, so here I was saying the owner, the mayor, 
and each one of these would be one round. So if mm -hmm. you click on the on the round number one, I would put here the date where that round started. Right. If you hover the mouse on that round, I can give you a kind of a, a totals, you know? Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I can give you the totals, but not only that, I can create a bunch of things from there. I can create form letters from there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I can I can create, you know, um, web browser board yeah. for your customers. So I can customize multiple codes per owner. So you give that code to each owner and they go to the web browser and they can see the status immediately. They always get the latest because you are in the cloud. So they get the latest, Just you just give the code to each one. I can generate a code on a per client basis. And of course that client would see only its own tree. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. And right clicking on it could be one way to um, yeah. do it. Supposing that this is the round and you click on the plus, you would see all the old sites on that round, like an mm -hmm. ET log with the status for each one of the old sites. And I can I can keep going deep. And of course, like we have here label links that you click and go somewhere. One of the things could be the tank in the inventory, or maybe the recipient mare where that was put on. And yeah. if you click on that mare name, it opens the summary card for that mare. Yes, please. That makes me really excited, Eduardo. You know, um, something like that. And, and and you could from here on this screen have some buttons where you can start the process. So you don't have to go anywhere. It's going to be like a control panel where mm -hmm. you start everything from here and you update everything from here and you retrieve reports from here and you can share information from here. You know, even you said form letters, even if wherever we're sending the the OA sites aren't a wise option user or even if they if they aren't we can still form letter from there and say that this mayor to this stallion this appointment time you know and customize our form letter which would replace an email really nicely absolutely because as soon as i have a round each one of the rounds i have a summary for that round and i have the numbers for each one of those steps and those numbers become variables for you to use in your form letters. Right. I just need you to highlight one of these line, lines. I put the form yeah. letters button here. You click and the data, you know, merges right there. I love it. Okay. Lindsay, are, yes. you, are you being able to follow yeah. my, my line of thinking here? Yes, I think that she's got better ideas than we because we haven't used it, but we're gonna we're gonna start and I think that those sound good. And I was just saying, man, I need to go find the semen order log because this looks all new to me and we haven't done this yet either. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, the semen order log is game changer. Like we're having to write down semen orders and hand it off. No, this is the bomb. So we, we're like baby steps there. So it's all going to hit us here next week, I'm sure. But <laughs> the call. Yeah, yeah, I see your point here. And, and, and Allison is using this code over here to put in this place that's, you know, hang on the wall by the stock. Yep. yep. Let me see if I can give you uh, no, when you arrive the semen, there's a little flashing sperm cell next to it to tell you that you can go get that horse. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! <laughs> yeah. When when it's a vitro, like you can set it to be a vitrified embryo and or that that's what you want to do to the embryo so they know maybe they need to check that mare for ovulation sooner than the next morning. Um, there's a little a little nitrogen tank next to it. I mean, it's the ticket. Okay. Can I see the that we have started with a new website. I love it. Yeah, it's coming little by little, but it's coming. 
So to get there, you just, you know, go to the signing page where you can enter the authorization code. And you just grab that code that is on the page. That can be done in any computer. So this is one is JCAM. Validate. And this is how the board looks like. And this yeah. will be auto refreshing. It's a web browser. You don't need a terminal for this. So, for example, let me grab uh, Feeling Sharp. I'm going to go back to the compute to the and Feeling Sharp. I'm going to right click and uh, set as ordered. It changes the status right on the spot over here. And if I just wait a few, I'm going to put here 30 seconds just so this can be a little bit faster. But I can refresh the browser. And the chart is now showing up here, and I still have two pending. And this would be, Allison, the same concept. Do you see vitrification tank here? If it is vitrification, there's tanks. Yeah. Where the mayor is, the stallion. What is the link, Allison? Refresh my memory here. The link is a patient link. So that would be a, a mayor that has a full link. Oh, oh. Yes, there's a full on the side. Um, okay. Let there's me also in here. If you guys hold horses to breed, like say they live in a pasture and they have FedEx coming, you want to hold them in a stall until it comes, um, you can put a temporary location in. Yeah. And so it'll have where they live all the time, but where they're at right now. Yeah. yeah. This is how it looks when the order is confirmed. And this is how it looks. When you confirm the arrival, you say the number of doses that you got. Let me go back to the browser. Mm -hmm. There it is. And the number of those will be on this corner here. But this also refreshes and stays, you know, as you're passing by, this stays on the, on the large, big TV and it auto refreshes on the wall and you can see everything going on. So the idea would be exactly the same, but for, you know, like we are talking here about the all sites and here would be, again, the owner, the mayor, and all the rounds. And you can keep diving. In hey, you know, while you have this up there that brings up a point so each one of these are kind of in a different different status right which which maybe that can be maybe status can be a column in there of what we did last or you know where they're well, at or what's pending or something like that for the round because when you click on the round you're going to see the number of all sites so this is going to like expanding more you know deeper nodes so when you click on the plus here you're gonna like see another level that shows all the old sites and the status for each one of the old sites okay and and i think the status would be more for the old sites than for the round itself unless you want me to create a status for the round like concluded pending, in progress, something like that, but actually the status that will be more kind of a deep information related probably would be to the down the road to the... I agree with you, down to the O side. Yes. Okay, I have, I have enough material to get started with this. I'm gonna create, now help me here, my, what, it, it might sound silly, but one of my big problems when I'm designing new stuff like this is to create is to come up with names. What is the name I give to this screen? Is headache log wrong to say? <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, I couldn't help it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I let it too easy for you, right, Allison? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You shouldn't. <laughs> 
So how should I call this? Um, Arch control panel? I don't know. I'm 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 just starting. Yeah, maybe. XC because yeah, XC. It's not only XCs, but you know, art or I don't know XC. Uh, maybe just an art panel. Art panel. Summary panel. Art summary panel. Anybody want to? Or like art summary card. I mean, if, to follow like you have a regular summary card. I don't know. I think the summary part is good. So whatever. Something after summary. Yeah. I know you have the flush log panel that is kind of a synopsis. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. And maybe panel goes more, more along with, uh, with the other ones that we have. Okay. Okay. I, I'm going to stick with the art summary panel. Okay, Eduardo, so when do we get this next week? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always, you know, shooting my own foot. But uh, this should be retro. I mean, everything we put in is going to stay there. So, like, we had one that we got. Well, it's there, there. It's just, it's going to just show up there in the screen. So, you just okay. gonna, here on this screen, you just have to change the scope of dates. Which yeah. is pretty much when the dates that each round started. Okay. Well, I gave you a lot of data to use when you're developing. Absolutely. So I'm gonna play with. I'm gonna grab a copy of your database internally here for me to play with, and I'm gonna work with it. Awesome. And I I will send you our Excel sheet of what we like the main things that we really really want to see, and then you may. I think it would be really nice if we had a meeting like this again for other people to give their opinion because I know there's other thoughts out there. Yeah, no, uh, let's keep doing this. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm. You know, as soon as I start working with this, I should have my first questions, and I'm gonna try to make this as open as possible to those who want to attend, come by, and uh, give their two cents. Um, let me take a look at the calendar here. There's a good chance for us to see the version one of this by the end of February. I want this to be running on this breeding season still. That's my intention. A little bit challenging goal, but we have to start somewhere, right? Yes, I really like it. Thank you for putting forth the effort in this. I know that um, there may not be a lot of people that want to use it, but maybe if we make it more user friendly, they would. Oh, as soon as you start sending out your form letters with this nice report, people are going to start people are going to start making questions. How do I, how do I, can, how can I get that to? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. And um, let me come up with the draft one on this. And as soon as I have something on the discussion group, I'm going to, you know, create a new event, let you guys know. We start with, you know, a couple of rounds. Uh, if not, probably might have my, my first questions by then, and I will keep you posted. Okay, thanks, Eduardo. Lindsay, if you want to call us about the semen order thing, there's also a courier log, too. So if you guys are interested, call us. I think she is without the mic over there. Okay. okay. Thanks, I'll, Eduardo. Thank you so much. Sorry. Sorry. Bye, guys. Sorry. Okay. We're here. All right. All right. I'll keep you guys posted on the progress of this. Appreciate it very much your presence. See you next time. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.